Okay, first things first, let's start from the beginning. Let's make a camp path. We can't do anything unless we make one, okay? So let's first get out of the stuck position that we're in, right? We, we were kind of just circling around this player, right? We want to get out of the stuck position and be able to fly around and make our camp path. So you're going to type in Merv input camera, okay? Great. Now we can fly around. Before we even start making a camp path, let's enable the draw option, okay? So this will draw the camp path as we're creating it. So you'll be able to get a visual of what's going on, of what you're creating and what the camp path looks like, okay? Cool. So let's do Merv camp path draw enabled one. Okay, cool. Merv camp path draw enabled one is now on. So every time we make a camp path anchor point, we're gonna be able to see it. Okay, first anchor point. It's going to be Merv Camp Path Add. Super simple command. Enter. Okay, cool. And because we have Merv Camp Path Draw Enabled 1 on, we can see it. All right. So the important thing is you have to let a little time go. So we're going to unpause the demo. And now I have demo toggle pause bound to my F9 key. So whenever you see the demo play and pause, that's because I'm hitting F9. And demo toggle pause is being activated. Okay, so we're gonna hit F9, let the demo play a little bit, good. Now we're gonna move forward, okay? We're gonna type in Merv, cam path, add again, okay? Good, we have our second one. We're gonna let a little time play, pause it. Just press up to get to Merv, cam path, add, the up arrow key, hit enter, good. We're gonna unpause it, let a little time play, move forward, up arrow key, Merv, cam path, add. Great. So we put in four anchor points. And that's really important because in order for a cam path to be able to function and to be able to play property, you need at least four anchor points. Okay. If you have three, it's not going to work. If you have five, it'll work. Now that we have it created, we have to be able to play it, right? We have to be able to enable it. Okay. So let's do Merv cam path enable one. Okay. Great, now it's enabled. By default, Merv camp paths are not enabled. You have to actually manually enable them. Okay, now let's watch it, okay? In order to watch it, we have to go back to the beginning, okay? Because right now we're at the end of our camp path, all right? So in order to figure out what tick the beginning of the camp path's at, we type in Merv camp path print. And now this is gonna be a little overwhelming at first because a lot of these numbers are gonna show up. And I'm gonna go through all of the numbers for you to, to tell you what each one means, okay? This first number here, this is actually the number of the anchor point. So whenever you wanna select or edit or identify an anchor point, you're actually gonna look at this number here, zero, one, two, three. This next number is gonna be your tick, okay? That's actually what tick the camp path anchor point starts at, okay? This next number is just the time in the demo that it starts at, okay? So tick, time, okay? Okay, this next one is game time. This is not a very necessary number to know. It, it's, it's not very helpful uh, in the grand scheme of making a camp path. So you can just skip that one. These next ones are kind of important, okay? What these numbers represent are the position in the map, the fob or the zoom, and then the angle at which you're viewing at, okay? So let's tell you how to skip back to the beginning of the demo so we can view our camp path, okay? Very easy command, it's gonna be demo underscore go to tick. Okay, now what you wanna do is you wanna go to this very first tick here, 33450, and just type that in. Okay, great, the demo just rewound. Now here's the important part. You notice how we're still not in the cam path, we're still floating around? That's because we're still in Merv input camera, okay? Now in order to get out, all you do is hit escape. Okay, great. Now we're in cam path mode, okay? Now we're ready to view our cam path. Now, what I like to do is I like to slow the cam path down a little bit while I view it. So we're gonna go to the console, we're gonna type in demo UI, and we're gonna click one fourth speed, okay? Great. Now, let's play it. Okay, cool. It's playing. Awesome. All right. We don't have to watch the whole thing. 
Okay, now that we did that, I actually want to show you how to make a cam path where you first zoom in the camera and then you set the anchor point, okay? Now you can um, set all the anchor points as default zoom and then edit them later, but I want to show you how to do it on the fly, okay? Okay, so it's super easy, right? First, we want to zoom in the camera, okay? Before we set the anchor point, all right? So what we want to do is we want to type in Merv input fav, okay? Okay, now we're gonna choose a value, okay? Anything above 90 is gonna give you a fisheye sort of view, sort of something like this, okay? Or this, all right? See how he starts to pull back and give you like this weird distorted look, all right? If you wanna go back to default, it's 90, okay? Now, anything below 90, it's gonna be zoomed in, all right? So if we go to like 50 or 20, right? You're going to get this zoomed in look, okay? Let's go back to 90. We'll start it at default, okay? Okay, so we're going to type in Merv, cam path, add, okay? And then now our next one, right? We want to zoom into, I don't know, 65. So it's like a third of the way zoomed, we'll say. All right, so let's move forward, let the demo play, pause it, bring up the uh, console. We'll type in Merv, input, fav, 60 okay now we're a little zoomed in right so we're going to set a cam path there okay now we're going to move forward again unpause the demo pause it now let's go to like 30 okay and then set a cam path okay and now for the last cam path unpause it let it play pause it we're going to bring it back to default which is 90 Okay, and then we'll set a cam path there. Okay, cool. So what we did is, instead of setting all the cam path anchor points as default zoom, we actually zoomed in while we made the cam path anchor points. This actually saves you so much time. So you get the zoomed look that you want on the fly and live. Okay, now that we set it, let's actually watch it now, okay? Merv, cam path, print, and demo, go to tick, one, nine, two, seven. Okay, and then Merv, cam path, enable one. Okay, escape. All right, cool. All right, let's play and watch. All right, so look at that. It looks like it's zooming in. Let's speed it up a little bit. And look how much zoomed in it is here at 30. And then it's going to zoom back out. All right, cool. So in a little bit, I'm actually going to show you how to edit all of these anchor point zoom, okay? So even though we set it and, you know, the first one's at 90, second one's at 60, third one's at 30, and then the last one's at 90, I can actually show you how to edit these values so we can play around with the zoom and get different looks. Okay, let's move on to the next part. Now that we have the very basics out of the way, right? Let's start doing the cool stuff with CamPass. Let's start editing it, all right? So let's get out of cam path mode so we can either do merv cam path enable zero or we can do merv input camera okay so this lets us get out of it while still enabling the cam path okay okay great so here's the cool part about editing cam paths you can find out all the commands that half-life advanced effects allows just by typing in merv cam path edit okay this may look super overwhelming but we're going to walk through this step by step and I'm gonna help you along the way, okay? Okay, first things first, before we start adjusting the individual anchor points of the cam path, let's change the entire cam path start time, okay? Say we like this cam path and the way that it works, but we want it to, we want it to start 100 ticks before the current time, okay? So what we do is we look at the tick here, so it's 33448, so we go to demo, go to tick, 333, Four, eight. So that's 100 ticks earlier than what it currently starts at, okay? And then all we do is type in Merv, cam path, edit, start, enter. Great. Now it starts 100 ticks earlier, okay? And you can actually see how much time that is. So it looks like it's about one second. As you can see, the last cam path started at four minutes and 21 seconds, and now this one starts at four minutes and 20 seconds, okay? So it's about one second sooner than it did, okay? All right, now let's edit the individual anchor points to make the anchor points react differently and start at different times, okay? So say we want one through three to stay at their current times, but we want anchor point zero to start earlier, okay? So what we do, and this is a very important command to know, the Merv cam path 
select command, okay? Now, the way that this works is, say we wanna choose one anchor point, right? You have to actually enter it twice. So we wanna choose the first anchor point, which is zero, we enter it zero, zero, okay? Num pound zero, pound zero, or number sign zero, number sign zero, okay? Now, as you can see, that anchor point just lit up. It's now purple, right? That means it's selected. What if we wanted to choose zero and one, okay? You can actually do that. Your first anchor point and then the range that you wanna select. So the range we want is zero to one, okay? Great. Now one is selected and as you can see, if we move that a little bit, you can see that this is purple as well. So these change colors, you see they're now purple and blue instead of red or green. In this instance, we just wanna select zero, so we're gonna do zero, zero. Okay, as you can see, there are a lot of things you can do with Merv Camp Ask Select. A lot of them have to do with adding or selecting anchor points based on the timing of the demo. Some people may use them. I, I personally don't think they add anything of value to, uh, to the movie making process. So I just stick to the, the, the basic stuff, which is Merv Camp Ask Select and then the anchor point numbers, which is pound number and then pound number, which you can see here actually. So, so now we have a specific camp path selected you can actually use that same command, Merv Camp Path Edit Start, okay? And it'll only change the start time of that Camp Path anchor point, okay? So let's type in Merv Camp Path Print. So the first anchor point starts at 33351, and the second one starts at 33510. Now let's, let's type in that same command, Merv Camp Path Edit Start, and see what happens now that we have an anchor point selected instead of no anchor point selected, okay? So let's actually go back in time real quick. So demo, go to tech, and let's go back to three, three, two, five, one. Okay, we'll go back another 100 ticks. Let's type in that same command, Merv Camp Path, edit start. Okay, great. Now let's check the timings of the Camp Path anchor points. Okay, cool. So with that command, the first anchor point now has moved back to 33263. Three. It's moved back 100 ticks, okay? And everything else has pretty much stayed the same. Okay, now say you want to incrementally increase the start time of a camp path. Say you don't want to go to a tick and then edit the start based on what tick you're currently at in the demo. Stay, say you want to stay at the point that you are in the demo. You just want to incrementally increase or decrease the starting time. Well, that's really easy. It's the same command, Merv Camp Path Edit Start, except we're gonna add a word called Delta to the end, okay? And now Delta is pretty much like the current time. It's the status quo. It's what we're currently at right now, okay? And what you wanna do is we're actually gonna subtract a value to Delta, okay? Or you can add a value to Delta. And this value actually represents seconds, okay? So you can add or subtract an entire second, or you can subtract or add fractions of a second, like 0.5, okay? So let's see this in action. Okay, so we still have the first camp path selected, right? And it's at uh, four minutes and 19 seconds. Say we wanna subtract an entire second from that. So in theory, it should be at four minutes and 18 seconds, okay? So let's do that, and let's type in Merv, camp path, print again, and voila. We're now at four minutes and 18 seconds, okay? Say we want to add two seconds. So in theory, it should go from four minutes and 18 seconds to four minutes and 20 seconds. Let's type in Merv Camp Path, edit start delta plus two now. Type in Merv print and voila, we're now at four minutes and 20 seconds, okay? Okay, before we move on, let's first deselect our camp path so we don't screw up just one anchor point. So we apply all of these things to the camp path as a whole. So we're gonna do Merv camp path select none. Okay, now there are no anchor points selected and whatever we do to the camp path, it'll, it'll happen to the entire camp path and not just one anchor point, okay? So this is actually a really cool thing you can do with camp paths. You can actually reverse the camp path. You can actually avoid having to do all this in post, you know, by doing, you know, velocity envelopes or time remapping and reversing the speed and whatnot. All of that you can throw away. This is the easy way to reverse your camp path once you've made it. Super easy. Type in Merv, camp path, edit, duration, and you type in negative one, okay? So now this is going to actually reverse your camp path, okay? So as you can see, this used to be zero, right? 
Now this is zero. And this used to be three. Now this is three, okay? And if you actually wanna reverse it back to normal, so you reverse the reverse, you actually just do negative one again. And now it's back to normal, okay? So this next thing that we're gonna do, super important. I'm gonna teach you how to animate the zoom of a cam path, okay? Using the things that we've already learned, which is Merck Cam Path Select, we're going to uh, choose Cam Path 1 and Cam Path Anchor Point 2, okay? Those are gonna be our zoomed in anchor points, and then three and zero are gonna be our regular zoom anchor points, okay? So with the things that we already learned, let's choose Merv Cam Path anchor point number one and Merv Camp Path anchor point number two, okay? You'll see that they are now in teal, okay? While the other two are in red, okay? So you know you've selected the right ones when they're a different color, remember that. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in Merv Camp Path edit fob, okay? That's our command. And we want to zoom in to, let's say 50. I like 50, it's a nice number, okay? So we wanna zoom into 50. All right, we want to start at 90, which is default, zoom into 50, and then zoom back out to 90 at the end. And you can actually see that there is a visual representation of the zoom. Do you, have, do you see how the representation of this is sort of wider and a little stubbier, right? If you look from the side. Now, if you look over here, do you see how it's a little smaller square and it actually gets elongated if you look from the side? So that's, that's a good representation of that you know that those are zoomed in and that these over here are normal. Okay, cool, let's, let's see how that looks now that we edited the fob, okay? Let's go to Merv Cam Path Print, okay? We're gonna go to the beginning of the Cam Path, which is at 32870, okay? We're gonna hit Escape, and then we're gonna slow this down a little bit so we can watch it. Okay, so I slowed it down, so we're gonna take a look at this, see how it looks. As you can see, as it's playing and it's moving forward, it's zooming in, do you see that? And as we go through our second anchor point and start making our way to our third anchor point, it's gonna start zooming out. And we kinda get this vertigo effect as we're moving forward and zooming out, right? It's kinda cool. And you can actually see this represented in text form. Okay, so we'll go back to Merv Camp Path Print, and we look down here, right? So this is our positional data, this is our angle data, and then this is our fob data. So the first anchor point's 90, and then 50, and then 50, and then 90, okay? You can always check this to make sure that your edits, your changes to your camp path, are actually working and being enacted. Okay, let me touch base on a common problem that people have, actually. So say you did all this, right? You edited the fob, you edited the zoom, but for some reason when you play your camp path, it's actually not zooming. Well. Super easy fix, type in Merv Fob Default, okay? At one point, you might have changed your fob to something other than default. It might be 50, it might be 10, it might be 190, like I just fat fingered that. Uh, either way, your fob is not set to default. That's why your zoom isn't animating when you play your camp path, okay? So always make sure your Merv Fob is set to default, and then it'll animate, okay? Super important thing to know and remember. Always check that. Okay, cool, now that we've dealt with fob, I'm gonna teach you how to edit the position and the angles of cam paths now, okay? This is one of the most important things that you'll ever learn about cam paths. Okay, so we're gonna edit the position and the angles of, uh, let's say this first anchor point, right? Number zero, all right? Okay, cool, so what we wanna do is, like we learned earlier, you wanna type in Merv cam path select. Number zero, number zero, okay? All right, so it's, it's selected, right? Okay, so let's go to the point in the map that we want the new position and angle of zero, okay? So it's over there, it's like right behind number one, and we want it to be over here, right? We kind of want it to start here and then move over to one, all right? So all you do is you just move over here while you're in Merv underscore input camera mode, all right? And then um, say we want the angle to be like this, okay? So first things first, let's edit the position. Merv, cam path, edit position, current, okay? All right, now, the anchor has now moved over to us, but do you see how the anchor is still sort of looking in the same direction as it was before? Well, that's because we didn't edit the angle, okay? So press up arrow key, go over here, type in angles and current. Okay, great. Now we just edit the position and the angle of the camera, all right? So now it's in a new place looking at a new direction.
this next command is actually really cool and really helpful at times, all right? Say you wanna move this entire cam path, right? And you wanna place it at a different part of the map, but you want the same movement as you have it right now, right? Just in a different place. Well, super easy to do, all right? And I'm gonna teach you now. All right, so first let's deselect that first anchor point, right? So select nine, okay? Now, I wanna lay this entire cam path um, let's do it over here. Let's put it right here. And I want to make it move to this point relative to where the first anchor point is. So this, this position, this angle that I'm at right now, I want this one to be the first anchor point, right? Of that old cam path. Okay. So what we do is we type in Merv cam path, edit anchor number zero, and then current. Okay, so let's hit enter and we'll see what happens. Okay, cool. So look at that. So remember how in spawn, zero was off to the side and the other anchor points were sort of over here and laid out. As you can see, we got a little too close to the wall there. We can easily just move this back. So three isn't clipping through the wall. Okay, there we go. All right, so the cam path just moved itself in relation to zero using that anchor command, okay? So that's pretty cool. So you can actually use this command in relation to another command that I'll teach you in a second and move cam paths across demos and maps. So I can take this cam path and place it in a position in vertigo and have the same movement and then transition between those two movements to have a really cool scene and a really cool sequence in a frag movie, okay? Okay, one more command that you may or may not need I don't use it too much, mostly because I like the way that the uh, the camera already moves. Uh, there's actually a way to make this cam path linear, okay? And by linear, I mean, do you see how it kind of curves into the next anchor point, right? You can actually make this so it moves sort of more robotically in a more linear fashion instead of a cubic fashion, okay? And now let me show you what that means, okay? So we type in Merv cam path edit interp, okay? And now this is what I'm talking about when I mean more robotic, okay? So let's type in Merv cam path edit interp position, okay? And now, as you can see, it's set to default. The default value is cubic, okay? But let's set it to linear and see how this cam path looks after we do that. As you can see, it's kind of smooth right now, right? So it kind of like, you know, it snakes into the other cam path ahead of it, all right? Well, let's change it to linear and see what looks like after that. Okay, cool. So as you can see, instead of snaking, curving into the next cam path, it just goes straight for it, okay? And it moves in a more boxy robotic, robotic manner. And here, let's actually go to the beginning of the cam path and let's see what it looks like. Okay, do you see how it moves more robotic like I, like I mentioned? You can do the same thing with rotation too. So you can see the current value is default. That's actually cubic, okay? You can change that to linear and make the rotation also very robotic, okay? It's not, this command isn't really too useful. You usually just wanna keep it at cubic. So I wouldn't suggest playing with it too much unless you have a specific look that you wanna achieve and you have an idea that would utilize this in an appropriate manner, okay? Okay, let's move on from editing the cam path and let's see what else we can do with cam paths, okay? So I already talked to you about add and we already talked to you about enable and I talked to you about draw. Clear, pretty self-explanatory, okay? You can clear the cam path or you can actually clear certain anchor points, okay? And two ways to do this. You can do merv cam path, select, and say we wanna clear three, right? So we selected three and now all we do is merv cam path clear and now three's gone, okay? Now, there's another way to do it, okay? You can also type in Merv cam path remove, okay? And say we wanna remove three. Well, Merv cam path remove three, and now three's gone, okay? So two different ways to delete cam path anchor points, all right? All right, cool, so let's move on, all right? We'll skip these two real quick. Merv cam path select, already talked to you about that. We've been using it the entire time. Merv cam path offset. Offset sort of does the same thing as uh, what editing the start delta does, okay? You can offset the, uh, the cam path by seconds or you can actually offset 
certain camp path anchor points by a value of another anchor point. It's kind of cool. These, these are interesting things that you can do. This command is useful. I, I don't really use it too much. I mean, if you want to be super efficient, this command might be what you want to use instead of start delta, but I find that start delta is still the way to go for, uh, for amateurs and even veterans alike. One of the last things I want to talk to you guys about with Merv Camp Paths is saving and loading. This is super important. You're actually going to find this to be one of the more useful things because time and time again, you're going to want to go back and maybe alter the camp path or maybe re-record for various reasons. And you want to be able to save and archive these camp paths that you make for future use, okay? So say we want to save this camp path, right? All right. All we do is we type Merv Camp Path save, and then we give it a name, okay? Let's call this tutorial cam path, okay? Okay, great, it's saved, all right? Now, say we're working, 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 right? And we accidentally clear it. Lucky for us, we saved it. Super easy thing to do. Just type in Merv cam path load, and we type in the name of it, which is tutorial cam path. And voila, it's back again. I highly suggest using the save and the load command to, uh, to you know, save your progress on your camp path because you never know when you're going to need to go back and alter it or you never know when you're going to need to reload it because you accidentally cleared it, which I have done before. Okay, so now that we saved the camp path, it's actually really important to know where these get saved to right? Does it get saved on your computer? Does it get saved internally on Half-Life Advanced Effects? Well, it actually does get saved to your computer and it gets saved in your Steam folder, okay? So we're going to navigate over to your Steam folder, okay? We're going to go to Steam Apps, we're going to go to Common, and then we're just going to go over to Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Now, as you can see, I have a bunch of these weird files, right, that don't even have file names and they're all two kilobytes big. Well, what are they? Well, these are our camp path files, okay? These are where they get saved. So you can go in and you can actually uh, extract them. Or if you want, what you can do is you can open them. And you can take a look at all of the data that they store. And they mostly just store uh, positional, fob, and angle data. So Half-Life Advanced Effects knows how to set this cam path whenever you load it into the program, okay? So if you ever need to manipulate these files or if you want to change the positional or angle data yourself or you ever want to delete them to, uh, to save space, this is where you go to access your camp path save files, okay? Okay, folks, one last thing I want to teach you guys before we leave. This technique incorporates a lot of the commands that we just learned about. This is a good way to understand how you can use foundational commands to make something more advanced and really cool for the viewer to watch. There's actually a way that you can load this cam path into another map, and then using the cam path edit anchor command, we can position it exactly where we want it, okay? So here, let me show you exactly what I'm talking about, okay? We have this cam path Inferno. Now, let's, uh, let's hop over to another map, okay? Okay, cool, we're in train. Now, what's great about when you load a demo from another demo, uh, everything actually transfers over, so including cam paths, and I'll show you what I mean. We'll type Merv cam path print, and you see our cam path from Inferno is actually already loaded in, but it's not going to be in the right spot. A lot of the time, it's actually going to be outside the map. So this one, yep, this one managed to find its way clipped in the brushes here, okay? But as you can see, it's the same exact cam path from Inferno, right? It's just in the wrong position, okay? All right, so... In this instance, we don't have to load it in, right? We can just uh, switch demos and it'll already be loaded in. Let's say you had this great idea after the fact. You got done editing for the day and you're like, oh, you know what would be really cool is if we did the same cam path movement from one demo to another. Uh, but unfortunately, you don't have the cam path loaded, right? Well, what we can do is first load it in because remember we saved it. So it's going to be Merv cam path load tutorial cam path. And now we have to reposition it, okay? Because we don't like where that positioning is right now, all right? I want to transition from that part Inferno right outside of T-Spawn, and I want to transition into, T into CT-Spawn, okay? So I want the beginning of the camp path to start here. This is going to be my zero anchor point, if you remember correctly, okay? So what we do is we go into the console, we type in Merv camp path, edit anchor, zero current, and voila. This part right here where I'm at is now our zero anchor point, okay? 
and the entire camp path now extends out beyond from this point. There's actually a lot of cool things you can do with this technique, and I'll leave it up to you to decide what that is. Uh, if you do want me to show you some fun things that you can do with this, leave a comment below. Tell me what it is. Tell me what you've seen in a movie, and, uh, and I'll try to replicate it and teach you how it's done. All right, cool. That's the complete rundown of everything you can do with CamPass, at least all the things that are super important that you need to know, and that will help you make frag movies. All of these basic commands will help you achieve more advanced effects and transitions as you play and you tinker with them. So I highly suggest you dive in, use all the stuff I taught you, and just see what you can create and what you can come up with. I'm sure with this tutorial, we'll see some great things out of you in no time.